As uh, we, we look at this year, you know, I've called this, titled this 2020 Vision. And I'm going to tell you, maybe you don't know this, but um, you know, some people say, Pastor, how do you come up with your sermons? What do you do? And, and I'll tell them, well, you know, I, I sum from what I'm just studying and, and just pop in my, my heart. And I'll start to, to work on it. And, and there's several ways I come up with a sermon. But what you may not know is that when I come up with a sermon, it's not finished until I have a title. Because I like, okay, what am I going to call it now? Sometimes I know right away, but sometimes I spend more time than I should on a title. But this time the title came easy. It's 2020, guys. It's 2020 Vision. And you know, at first I'm like, no, I can't call it 20. It's too easy. You know, there's going to be every pastor out there with 2020 Vision just because it's a great title, right? But I'm going to tell you, I also thought, I'm not going to be the one pastor that passed it up because this is the only time we're going to see 2020. Come on, right? But as I was thinking about it, you know, even I went away and we prayed. And, and listen, it's not that, that, oh, I have a great new vision for 2020 and this is what God's going to do. We're going to go in this direction now. Listen, our direction is and always has been to love God, love people, and shine his light. But God gives us things that, that on my heart and the, 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 the leadership here of things we want to do. We want to continue to see that vision come to pass. We don't want to stall out. And we want to get through to where God wants us to be. I think Israel got stalled out for 40 years, but God had a place for them to be. I want this to be the year that we see some things come to fruition. I want to continue to see light groups grow. I want to continue to see people born again, baptized, uh, marriages healed. I want to see men's ministry, women's ministry, youth, all that grow. I want, to, I want to see a building over here for kids. Come on, I want to reach out to those kids and families. But I don't want it to stop there. I, want to, I don't want to get stalled out in anything that God has for us. I want to do more things in the community, and we'll be talking about those things. But as I was studying, I, I, I titled this sermon this morning, Crossing Over. And the tagline for this 2020 Vision series, which we'll be on for the next few weeks, is this. Seeing God's plans, protection, and provision more clearly. And what I mean by that is that we need to, we need to see clearly. Uh, I was talking to somebody recently, and they said, uh, you know, I've never had 20-20 vision. Listen, I pray for your eyesight. I pray that you have 20-20 vision in the, in the natural, and God heals, heals your eyesight. But I want us to have clear vision spiritually. I want us to have clear vision, a vision of faith that God is with us, that God has gone before us, that God has a plan for us. He has provision for us. He has protection for us. We want to see those things more clearly, become aware of them, that recognizing that God has a plan for us and that he's going to meet our needs. And, and listen to this, that he's an ever-present help in time of need. You know, I wish I could come up here and say, you know what, guys, I, I spent a lot of time in prayer at seeking God for a, a word for you this year. And here's what God said. God said today is going to be the year of no problems and no challenges. Come on. Wouldn't that be amazing? But then you, if I did that, you'd know, okay, he's a little off. Because, you know, in this world, we're going to have challenges. We're going to have problems. But let me declare to you this morning that even in those challenges, God is with you. And, and this, this is what God told Israel. Look, you're going to go take this land. You have a part to play. But listen, when you go, be strong, be courageous. Because you're going to face some challenges. But you can be strong and courageous because you know that I am with you. Give him praise this morning. <laughs> because you know that he is with you. So seeing God's plans, provisions, and his protection in 2020 and beyond, if the Lord tarries. But having a spiritual awareness of God's plan for our lives, being able to see, we'll be talking about this, how God, open our eyes so that we can see your path, your direction, your plans. Father, let us understand that you're our provider for us and understand that, that you're with us and you'll protect us, Father. You fight our battles for us, that we'll see the things that God wants for us come to fruition. Those plans, they become a reality in our lives. They become a reality in our marriage, in our home, and in, in our businesses that we see. The, and listen, here's the thing, that we cross over. Let this be the, if there's a word for you this morning, let this 2020, let it be a year of crossover. Listen, and let me tell you this. God does not want you as Israel. He didn't want Israel to. He does not want you to stay on the opposite side of your promise. Come on. He wants you to cross over into your promise as he wanted them. And we know the story that, you know, that they left Egypt and God had a plan for them and they wanted to cross over. And, and Moses sent spies over to the land in Canaan. And they came back and ten spies were like, oh, we can't do this. And two were like, we can, Joshua and Caleb. No, we are well able to do it. Yeah. 
But we know that they wandered for 40 years. They did not cross over. But now Moses has passed on and, and God is speaking to Joshua to lead the people over. And he's given him some instructions, given him some encouragement of, of how he can now take the people, God's people, and cross over from wandering into God's promise. And that's what I want us to do. Whatever area in our life that we've been lingering behind, lagging behind, or wandering, let's let this be the year that we step over into what God wants for us. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. So in Joshua 1, verse 1, it says this. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan... You and all this people to the land which I am giving you, giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. I love what he says there. Y'all notice that? Every place that you will put your foot, I've already given it to you. So when they step in the land, they say, look, I may have a battle. There may be a challenge. There may be an obstacle. But God's already given this to me. I don't care what you face in 2020. You face it, but you say, you know what? God's already made me a victor over this. Amen? I have given you, as I said to Moses from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and to the great sea towards the going down of the sun, in other words, as far as you can see, shall be your territory. And I love this in verse 5. Listen, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Notice what he didn't say. No one will stand against you. No, you're going to have some challenges, but they will not be successful because I'm with you. Amen. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Listen, I don't care what you've gone through, what you're going through. God will never leave you or forsake you. He's always with you. Be strong and of good courage for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Listen, that's, that's prophetic right there he's telling be strong. And he can always have this in, in his mind. No, you know what? God said, I'm going to divide this. I'm going to conquer this. And I'm going to divide it between these people. So no matter how defeated I look or what it looks like, I need to see that the walls are coming down. Come on. I need to see that because God told me that I'm going to divide it to his people. And he says this. Only, this is your role. Joshua, I'm doing this for you. This is what you're going to do. Only be strong and very courageous. That you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. And he says this, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall, med you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous. Then you will make your way prosperous. And then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Father, we come to you this morning, and we thank you, Father, for your word, for your truth, for your promises. Father, help us to see your plans. Father, your provision, your protection more clearly. Help us to be aware of the things that your, the promises you have for us, Father. And Father, when we face challenges, don't let us focus on them. Let us focus on your word. Father, let us meditate on your word so that it will be strong and we can be courageous knowing that you're with us. Father, let this be a year that we cross over, that we stop wandering where we are and we make an advancement to where you want us to be and we give you praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen. So 2020, I thought about this. 20, everybody say 2020. Doesn't that just sound like the future? I mean, 2020, it just sounds like we're living in, in the future. It's like we're living in the Jetsons cartoon. Come on. How many of you remember the Jetsons? Come on. Yeah. How many of you don't remember the Jetsons? They're over in the other building. Those, they don't remember. But we remember the Jetsons. Guys, I was thinking about this 2020, just write it. I had to write it a couple times already. 2020. And we, listen, we've come a long ways. When you think about 1980, and here we are in 2020, just the advancements that we've made and how far we, we've come. And guys, I'm telling you, we've got, we've got, how many of you remember Dick Tracy? Come on, Dick Tracy. Dick, you know, talk to people on your phone, what, on your watch. What a crazy idea. You know? 
Just the, the, where your cars drive themselves as people sleep behind the wheel. <laughs> Park themselves. I mean, you can talk to people from around the world on your phone. Not only that, FaceTime. I see you, you see me. Yeah. Remember the Jetsons? They had a robot. Her name was Rosie. Rosie. I mean, we have a robot at our house called iRobot. It, it, it vacuums the floor, you know? It, it, it just goes, it fights the cat sometimes. It eats rugs sometimes, you know? But I thought about, man, do you realize how far we've come in just technology and things like that? And we can look, I mean, we can think back to 1980 and think, well, look, I didn't grow up with a cell phone, right? But look where we are now. We can look and say, you know what, I can think back to 1980 and, man, God, we made some advancements. But then I think, you know, I can look back 1980 and see where I'm at now. But can I look back when I first started walking with the Lord and look at my life now and say, Lord, I've made some advancements. Or am I still stuck in the 1980s? Come on. Come on. Am I still stuck? Am I still wandering when I should be farther along? Am I, am I still eating solid food or am I still drinking milk? You know, have I, have I, by this time we should be teachers and we're just babes. So I don't want to just advance in technology as the years go by. I want to get to the place spiritually God wants me to be. I want to cross over. I want to cross over. I want to quit fighting the same things I've been fighting. I, I, want to, I want to have success and some spiritual success in some areas in my life that God wants for me, that he states for me in his word. Come on, are you with me? Give him praise if you do. So, Lord, let us just let us advance. Let us, let us move to where you want us to be. God had a plan for Israel not to just stay where they were for 40 years. He wanted them to go over into the promised land that he had for them. He wanted to see them, see the things come to fruition that he had planned for them. But because of their lack of faith and, they were, uh, they were, and disobedience, they were unable to get there. Might I say it could be the same reasons we're not where we need to be with God? And here Moses, uh, Joshua comes along after Moses has passed away. And he's saying, look, Moses, it's your time to, to, to cross over and to realize the things I've called the, my people to experience. So point number one is this. It's time to arise. It's time to rise. He says, look, this, my servant Moses is dead. And now arise and go over this Jordan. This plan, this place where you've been circling. And maybe you've passed this, this Jordan many times. But it's time to, to move forward. It's time to go over. It's time to arise, to get motivated and walk into the promises that I have for you and my people that I have for them. Amen. The word arise, I mean, it's a simple word. It just means, to, you know, to get up. The word kum, it means to... In, in Hebrew, get up or stand up. But when you research that word further, it literally means to become powerful. Joshua, it's time now to become powerful, to walk in your authority, to walk in your might and cross over into the things that I have for you. Listen, might I say it's time for us to get strong and walk over to the things that God has for us. It's time to arise. The word arise also means to get stirred up and get motivated. I'm a little stirred up and motivated this morning. You know? Joshua, it's time to arise, to get motivated, to get stirred up and go over and, and take hold of the things that I have planned for you. And, you know, I was thinking about this, this, this time off that we've had has been great. Got a lot of time with the Lord, a lot of time with Ava and a lot of time doing things around the house that have been needing to be done. Listen, I, the, as, uh, the last couple of weeks I've painted my house. I've pulled up all my landscape lighting and replaced it with new lighting. Some, some of the things that's been needing to be done around the house. Uh, replaced countertops in my house, for, uh, fixtures in the bathroom. I hung a ring doorbell and garage uh, lights over the house. Ava would not let me rest. <laughs> I felt like our couch had a buzzer on it. I'd sit down and she'd go, hey, Ronnie, can you do this? No, I'm kidding. I'm teasing. But I, got a lot, I was motivated. I got a lot of things done. Y'all may think, well, that's great, Pastor. You're motivated. But I have to be honest with you. I haven't been motivated. Because some of these things have been on my list for a long time. Days. Weeks. Years. Listen, I've been looking at my house for three to four years. I'm just telling you. You know, we've lived there now for 10 years. The house was 10 years when we bought it. We've been, the house is 20 years old. And I don't know if it's painted before we got there. But I've never painted it. 
and it's got hardy siding on it, you know, that cement based board on the outside of it, but it's been fading over the years. I mean, I've been looking at it, and, and two sides of our house are like 25 feet in the air or, or more, and I don't have a ladder high enough. Well, I can't paint it, I don't have a ladder. <laughs> so I've just been wandering around the house <laughs> for four years looking at it been trying to plan what's the best way to do this because some of it's hard to get to. I thought, well, I could rent one of those, those wheels, those lifts that you can rent at the uh, rental supply, and I could get up there, and that'd be easy. I'd just go paint it, and it, paint here, get it done real quick, but that's expensive, probably wouldn't work. So I just wait. So I went out and bought an airless sprayer. I thought, well, that'll do it. That'll make it go by quick because I'm dreading doing it. I'm thinking, it's going to take a long time. I asked somebody. I went by and got a bid on it, and I, you know, well, the price wasn't bad. I went and looked at a job they did, and I'm like, eh, no, I'll do it myself. How many of you like that? I can do it myself, you know. I'll do it years down the road, but I'll do it myself. So I went, I took the airless sprayer back because I'm thinking, man, it'll get all over the place. I, you know, I can't do that. So I got one of those uh, Wagner power rollers, and I thought, well, I'll do that. The, the, the cord went long enough for what I needed, and I'm thinking, I can't use that. So I finally resolved, I'm just going to get a ladder. Pastor Steve loaned me a ladder. Thank you, Steve, for loaning me your ladder. <laughs> had no excuse. <clears throat> so anyway, so I put the ladder up, and, and listen, I, I, you know what I did? I finally just said, I'm just going to rise and get it done. So I did. I rose up, got the ladder up, and I went up there. I painted it, got down, and just a little bit because I could reach this far, reach this far. But I did the whole house. Listen, it, it took me a total of about 14 hours over two days to paint my house. For what I've been putting off for about four years, it took me two days to get done by myself. Come on. Are you all proud of me? <laughs> proud of me? Got it done. But you know what I was thinking about this? It, it, sometimes, it, listen, when I, now I don't get out and look at my house and walk around it and wander and go, man, I sure need to get this done. Now I get out there and I, if y'all see me outside now, I'm admiring my paint job. <laughs> Looking at it. You know, it looks pretty good. You know, watching paint dry. <laughs> it's dry now, you know. But you know, listen, I believe there's things that, that are lingering in our lives spiritually or practically that, man, if we just arise and get it done, we'll find out that wasn't as complicated as I thought it was. Come on. And we can be proud that we've got it done. And listen, God, even though you may not have help, God is with you to help you. Amen. But he says, arise. It's time to, to stop making the excuses. You know, for me, it was like it's too hot. It's too challenging. It's too hot in the summer, too cold in the winter. And when the weather was right, I was praying for hot or cold weather. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> too expensive, too busy. All these excuses. But let's stop making the excuses and let's just arise. Get motivated. Look at somebody say, get motivated. Come on. Get motivated. Stop making the excuses and get it done. 2020 crossover. It's time to cross over, to arise. And again, listen to this. Like Israel, God has not planned for you to stay on the opposite side of your promise. It's time to get motivated and get off of the wandering side over to the blessing side. Come on, give him praise this morning. So arise. Time to arise. Second thing is this. God is with you. Listen, you ever felt alone? Just, man, I don't know if I can do this. Listen, it, it was so important for God to tell Joshua and for Joshua to understand that, uh, that he's with him. I mean, look back. Look at Solomon. Lord, how can I do this? I need wisdom. I need this. Moses is like, well, I can't do this on my own. And, and we all are like that. But it's comforting to know that God is with you. He is an ever-present help in your time of need. Come on. Ever, uh, listen, I don't know what you're going to face. I, again, I would love to say you're not going to have any problems in 2020, but you might. But here's the thing. When you do, know that God's with you, that God's there to fight with you. He'll fight your battles. Listen, we have to have courage. We have to, to play our part. But understanding that he is there gives us strength. And because he's there, listen, why did Caleb, why was Caleb, uh, you know, whenever Moses told the spies to go over and they came back in the tent, we're like, no, we can't. Joshua and, Ca Joshua and Caleb, Caleb were like, oh, no, we can't. We are well able to do this. They saw the same things the other spies saw. You know what the difference was? They saw that God was with him. We could do this. Why? Because God said so. Well, I can't do this. Well, wait a minute. What did God say? God said I can. Then I can. Come on. Give him praise. Give him praise. And because of that, in verse 5, God tells Joshua, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you, and I will not leave you nor forsake you. Listen, no one. here's the thing. Wouldn't it be great if nobody ever got in your way? 
If the enemy never tried to stump you or make you stumble or get in your way and, and, and be a barrier between you and God's promises, that would be awesome. But the reality and the truth is that, that there are challenges that we face. But here's what God's saying. He's not saying, look, when you go over there, I'm going to remove all the people. No, that's your job. But when you do come across the people of the land that you need to dispossess out of that land, understand this, that I've already given it to you. That even though they're there, they're not going to be able to stand and prevent you from achieving what I've called you achieve, to achieve and receiving what I've called you to receive. Give him praise for that. Come on. No man will be able to stand against you. He's an he's a ever-present help in time of need. He'll never leave you, never forsake you, never abandon you. You will never be alone with God. You'll never be without God. He's always there. Listen, if God be for you, Romans 8 says, if God be for you, who can stand against you? I mean, that's rhetorical. It's like, well, nobody. If God's on my side, nobody can, nobody can defeat me. Nobody can stand against me. Nobody can prevent me from getting to where God wants me to be because God is on my side and he's on your side too. He's on your side too. That's the 2020 vision that we need to have. A vision to say, man, I'm going to get up and I'm going to, I'm going to move towards what God has for me. And no one can stand in my way. Against what God has for me. Because God is with me. Joshua 13, 30. Then Caleb quieted the people. I think this is interesting. Going back to when Moses sent the spies and they came back and they were all like, oh, we can't do it. Listen, you're going to have opposition. You're going to have people that even though you may be standing in faith or something, people are going to be standing in fear. But look, look what it says of what Caleb did. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. I would say that we're going to have to quiet some people in 2020. Come on. When we face some challenges, and they're looking at it, oh, this is going to be too challenging. We're not going to be able to, no, no, no. Well, you need to be quiet about that because God said we can do this and we're going to do it. Amen. I'm moving forward with, God, with what God says because he is with me and he's for me. Number three is this, stay focused for success. I believe one of the things that God was stressing to Joshua is the importance of, of staying close to God's word, his commands, and, and understanding that that's a key to success, God's instructions. So it's to stay focused. If you're going to have success, stay focused. So we need to stay focused in 2020 for success. And I was thinking about this when I was putting in the, the ring doorbell. Okay, the, you know what a ring doorbell is, right? It's a doorbell and you push it, it goes ring. <laughs> no, it has a camera in it, you know? So I was thinking about this. I've never installed that. And listen, I'm not the most tech savvy guy. You know, I do a lot of things, but when it comes to technology and things like that, I gotta pay attention. You know, anybody here gotta pay attention? <laughs> I gotta pay attention. So I got the manual out. I sat down on the couch with the box. I didn't look at the parts and the, all the, the doorbell. I just got the manual out. And I thank God it came with a manual, and this time I read it. <laughs> so I got the manual out, and I sat there, and I read through the whole manual. I mean, I'm reading everything in there. I want to make sure I get this. I understand this. And even when I didn't understand something, oh, well, it comes with this part. I look in the box, and I go, okay. Okay, I see that. I'm getting a picture. I'm getting a vision, right? I'm, I got this. So, so I, I was staying focused. So I put the manual down once I had it here. Okay, I got it. I go outside, take all the parts, and I'm there at the door, taking off the old doorbell, putting it in. But there were several times during that installation that I would go back and look at the manual again because I just didn't quite remember. Or maybe I missed something. I'm, I'm just double-checking myself. I had to go back and look at it again. For success, I had to stay focused. I mean, I could just wing it. I don't remember what the manual said. Well, I'll probably just put this wire here. It might work. No, I wanted to be successful. So I went back, I get the man. Listen, what, what God is telling Joshua to do, to do is stay focused. How many of you want to have success? Yes. Then we got to stay focused. Joshua 1, 7, only be strong and, and be courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from the right or turn uh, right, right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. So I kept going back to it. You see, and I think, am I that way in my life sometimes? Well, you know, so maybe we sit down and we read some scripture. Maybe we've read the Bible. Maybe we've read the whole Bible, maybe more than once. And then we set it aside and we go do our thing, right? But there's times in our life where we got to go back. I think I need to go back and look at this again. Come on. If I'm going to have success, I need to make sure I read that right. Come on. 
I need to make sure I apply this right. Or, or I could just wing it. I don't remember exactly what God's word said here. I'm just going to wing it. I'm going to say whatever comes out of my mouth. Probably not the best idea. But if we're going to have success, we need to stay focused. And I'm going to tell you, why, if you ask me, why did I read the manual? Well, I'll tell you why. I read the manual so that I could do according to all that was written in it. Right? I didn't just read it for entertainment. Now listen, we can read the Bible for a lot of reasons. We can read it out, you know, i got a devotional, i got a plan, I want to read this, I want to check this off, it makes me feel good. But I want to read it so that I can do according to all that is written in it. And when I do that, I have success in my life. If I'm going to have success in 2020, then I'm going to read it to do according to all that is written in it. Amen? God's vision for success is better than mine. I can do things my own way. I can wing it. Listen, the, the manual for the doorbell is better than my idea of installation. God's word, God's plan is better than my plan. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not evil to give you a future and hope. Listen, I know they were in exile. And God's trying to give them a vision of, look, if you, it may look bad now, but this is what i got planned for you. You know, I know you're going to be in exile here and it's not going to be pleasant. But listen, I've got a plan. I've got a vision for you. But, but notice what it, what it says here. That, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, God's people. We're God's people. Thoughts of peace and not evil. Can I just tell you this? God's thoughts towards you is for peace and not evil. His thoughts towards you are for peace and not evil. And we need to have that vision for ourselves. And he tells him, don't turn to the right hand or the left. In other words, what he's saying is, look, don't deviate. Don't deviate from it. And can I just say this? I believe, look, I understand again that in this world we're going to have tribulation. We're going to have trials. We're going to have trouble. Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. In this world, we're going to run through some stuff. Some unexpected things. Some challenges. But listen, do you know I believe that there's a lot of challenges that we run into that we cause on our own. Mm. We cause on our own. How, do, how can we avoid causing problems on our own? How about this? Here's a good idea. Don't deviate from God's word. Well, Lord, I know you told me to love my enemies, but here's what I think about this person. I'm going to tell them to their face. Right? Uh, now, probably going to cause some problems. You know? Lord, I know you said to do this with my finances, but I think I'm going to do this. Uh, you know, probably not the best idea. Come on, I'm with you. Are you with me? Don't deviate to the left or right. If we want to have success, Joshua, if you want to have success when you go in there, put, put your nose in, into the law and study it, meditate on it, know it, day and night, study it, and so that you'll have good success. Because there's going to be times that you're going to be tempted to deviate, but don't deviate to the left hand or the right hand. You stay in the center of my will and my word, and you're going to have good success. Give him praise. Come on. Give him praise. So if we're going to have less problems in 2020 than we had in 2019, let's don't deviate from his word. Listen, we're running a race, and, and, and Paul says that he was run the race with endurance that is, is set before us, looking unto Jesus. Keep your eyes on him. Don't, don't take your eyes. Keep your eyes on him if we're going to have good success. Focus for success. Joshua 1.8, familiar passage. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. He tells him, don't depart, don't let it depart from your mouth. Look, he's not saying don't speak it. He's not saying don't let it come out of your mouth. What he's saying is basically the opposite. Don't stop speaking God's truth. Because we're tempted a lot of times to speak what we feel and speak out of fear and not faith. To, to speak out of our natural thinking and not our supernatural, uh, uh, what God's word says. And he said, look, don't start speaking things out of your own heart, but speak God's word continually. And don't be tempted to say something that, that is opposite. Listen, when we hear the word evil, we think of maybe, you know, oh, it's an evil, evil picture or whatever. You know what evil simply is? Evil is something that is not according to God's will. It's twisted. It's off base. It's, it's evil. It's, it's not what God's will is. And, and we got to make sure, let's don't let things come out of our mouth that are evil, that are out of whack with what God says, out of line with what he says. Let's keep speaking his word, his truth. Then we'll have good success. Amen? Then we'll have good success. It's like, like the, the ten spies going back to them. They came, the ten spies came back. Some, and they were like, ten of, ten of them were like, 
we are like grasshoppers in our own eyes. In other words, we see our, our vision of ourself is small. And Joshua and Caleb, you know, I love the scripture says that God sits above the, the circle of the earth and, and everything's like grasshoppers to him. Everything's small to him, right? But we need to make sure we're seeing the vision of who we are and not making our problems bigger than God is. Don't let it depart from your mouth. The spies were like, well, we're not able. We can't do it. They had the wrong vision. But Joshua and Caleb were speaking God's word. No, we can. We're able. We can get through this. I don't care what you face, but let's make sure that we're speaking God's word, his truth. In other words, I think I'd rather in 2020 say, you know what? By his stripes, I am healed rather than, you know, I think I'm getting sick. Come on. Right? I don't want his word to stop coming out of my mouth. Lord, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me rather than I can't do this. I can't overcome this. I'm not going to make it through this challenge. No, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Well, I'm not going to say I'm afraid. Instead, I'm going to say I'm not going to fear any evil. Even though I walk through the shadow of the valley of death, wherever I am in the situation I'm in, I'm going to let faith Faith support me and not fear tear, tear me down. Oh, Lord, I, you know, maybe we're going to have some uh, unexpected things and get depressed. But instead of saying that, you know what? I'm going to let the joy of the Lord be my strength. In other words, don't let God's word stop coming out of your mouth, but speak his truth. He tells him to meditate in it day and night. And he, again, he's talking about these are the things that are going to give you success. And these are the same things that's going to give us success. Meditate day and night. Meditate. The word meditate means to think deeply and focus on something. How can I meditate on God day and night all the time? Think, have we ever just stopped and, start and thought deeply on the principles of God? His, his plan, his provision, his protection, his words. Think deeply on them. The word for meditate in the Hebrew is the word Hagah. And it means, listen to this, to speak, to utter. It also means to imagine are envisioned. So when we meditate day and night, we're envisioning God's plans, God's blessings, God's purposes, not evil in our lives, not defeat, but victory. So we need to see ourselves as God sees us. And he says, says observe to do. So we read God's word in order to apply it to our lives. If it's true, listen, if it's true with instructions that come with a, something we install in our house, how much more true is it with God's word? Amen? Last point, number four, and then we'll close in just a moment. But listen to this. He tells him this. He tells Joshua, be strong and courageous. Now, I thought about this when I read this. and That God says, look, I've given you this land. Everywhere you put your foot, matter of fact, I'm not going to give it. I've already given it to you. You just got to get your foot over there on it. Come on. It's yours. And I'm with you. And it, I've already given it. Well, God, if you've already given it to me and it's mine, then what do I need to be courageous about? Because you're in this flesh like Joshua. And even though God is on your side and God's with you, we are going to face some things face to face in this flesh. And our part is to stay strong and courageous through those moments if we're going to have success in them. Yeah, it's, by, it's his plan. It's, it's, he's with us. And it's not by my might, but it's his. But I need to be strong and courageous as Joshua did because he was human just like us. So that when we face things that in the natural will cause fear, we've got to let faith rise up in us and stand strong as we deal with these problems. Listen, it takes courage to keep moving in the direction that God wants us to move in. I would venture to say, you know, here we are in 2020, and if you're like me and you look at what's happening around the world, I, I think it's, as time goes by, it's going to take more courage and more strength to stand for the things of God. Even though we know, man, we will already have the victory. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It's going to take some courage, and it's going to take some strength. We've got to stand strong. And he tells him this at least three times. And one of the times he tells him this in Joshua 1, 9. Listen to this. He says, have I not commanded you to be strong and good, of good courage? Do not be afraid or, or, nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Notice this. He's, he commanded him to be afraid. You know, it's kind of like this. I don't know. I'm kind of afraid. Well, just stop it. <laughs> right? I'm commanding you to stop being afraid. How do I stop being afraid? It's an emotion I have. And God's saying, look, I commanded you. We've got to have that attitude. I am not going to let fear enter my soul. Enter my spirit. I'm going to stay strong. I'm going to be determined. 
I'm going to be devoted to being strong and let the joy of the Lord be my strength no matter what I go through. And, you know, just, just make sure that we, we understand it. It's required of us to be strong and courageous. But it's interesting, too, that he says, nor be dismayed. And I looked up the word dismayed. So, okay, don't be, don't be afraid, fearful. But he says, don't be dismayed. And the word dismayed from the word kathoth means to be shattered or broken. I read that and I thought, that's so powerful. And listen, the Webster's version of what dismayed means is this, to be confused or distressed over something unexpected. Now listen, I don't know what the future holds for you. I don't know what it holds for me. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, the next day, or through this year, or the next. I don't know. But I know this, what God tells me to do is he told Joshua, don't be afraid. And he says, look, when unexpected things happen, don't be shattered and don't be broken because God's with you. And you're going to get through this. Listen, and I'm telling you, it makes a difference. I, I've seen people that, that one go through the same thing as another, and, and how it affects one may affect the other one differently, but we've got to be determined. I don't care what I face. I'm not going to let it break me. I'm not going to be shattered by it. I'm going to know that God's with me, and if God is for me, who can be against me? Amen. Come on, give him praise. So I thought, well, how can I avoid being afraid and dismayed? Well, how about this? Let's get a vision for 2020. Let's have 2020 vision. Let's see that God has not planned for us to stay on the opposite side of our promise. Let's understand that's a truth. God doesn't want me to stay here. He wants me to move past and that no man can stand against me. No enemy, no weapon formed against me or you can prosper. And the Lord, your God, is with you. That's how we avoid being broken and shattered, understanding these truths.